What's cracking? Big dogs. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the headquarters. We're jumping in a draft on Underdog Fantasy. If you have not yet signed up for Underdog Fantasy, you're just not part of the family. You know what? Fucking Dom Toretto ain't letting you in the family. That's how much non-family you are. You're not blood related. You're not married through a sister's cousin's dog's. Pets, lizards, mother's asses, owner. None of it. None of it. We will be having none of it, but we will be mocking right now, okay? And we're on underdogfantasy.com, single best place to prep for your fantasy football drafts. This is coming out Friday morning, which is wonderful because that means the BDGE NYC draft weekend is live. It's happening. It's in the midst. I might be off the marks right now by the time you're watching this. Very highly likely. I have my first actual um, money league tomorrow. I have the 105. It's a super flex league. So I am trying to zone in on the ADPs here. This is the single best platform to practice for your actual fantasy football drafts because the ADP is sharp as shit. Now, I will, t I will tell you, all of these drafts are buy-ins. They're $3 drafts to buy in because you actually do win money if you win the league, if you finish in the top three. Okay, so what you're going to want to do is go to Underdog Fantasy, the link to download the app. The app is beautiful. The app is absolutely fucking flawless. I actually went into their office today. I uh, got to meet the dev team, and it's no wonder why they're flawless because they have about 10 dudes in a sweatshop just fucking chopping away at the, at, the, uh, at the designs and the code and all that beautiful stuff. But that's neither here nor here. We're here to draft today, and uh, you should download the app. And when you throw $10 on there, you're going to use the promo code BDGE, BDGE, and you're going to get $25 on top of that $10 you threw down. So you're going to have $35 into your account. You want to do one big money draft and then three small ones. You want to do fucking 11 $3 drafts and then exchange the other $2 you have for a $2 bill. By all means, run it. Run it. All right. Uh, we are picking from the 110. They randomize it. All right. Underdog Fantasy. Link is in the app. Link for the app is in the description, in the show notes, whatever the fuck you want to say. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm filming this late at night. It's 9 o'clock. We got the draft weekend kicking off tomorrow, so my head's kind of spinning everywhere. So we have Christian McCaffrey at the 101, Cook, Kamara, Henry, Zeke, Adams, Diggs. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be honest with you. You know, we've been flip-flopping like a little fish over what to do at the, at the 103. And you guys saw that TikTok video where the guy goes over to the pool and it says, whoever, like, stamped the, you know, next to the pool, it says how deep the pool is. And it'll be, like, eight feet. Whoever, like, did the rollover with the paint did it twice by accident. So it says 88 feet. And the dude's like, I ain't going in that. F I'm going fucking home because it says 88 feet. He's like, what do you think I am, a fucking fish? Cool story, right? Sick, guys. Appreciate the support. All right. Um, let me make my pick real quick. So we're at the 110. We're at the 110. We usually don't see Travis Kelsey fall down here to the 110 in these drafts. But I'm programmed different. I'm built different. We're not taking Travis Kelsey. We're not taking a fucking tight end in the first round. Um, we have 14 seconds on the clock. Saquon dropping a 110. Austin Eckler sitting there. Y'all know I like to rip off of the running back ASAP immediately. Calvin Ridley looking fucking flawless out there. Like Zen, the Zendaya fantasy drafts. But we're actually going to go with Saquon. Um sitting there at the 110. If you're in a if you're in a non-sharp league, if you're in a league where someone's going to be taking Saquon top 3, top 5, fade that. Fade that. We are nervous about the ACL. We don't think he's going to be 100% to start the season, okay? Maybe he gets there a month in, but we, we're not we're not we're not trying to use a top 5 pick on it when we have degenerates out here like Alvin Kamara who just balls. E-Town ballers? Do I know you? Um Alvin Kamara, I actually moved Alvin Kamara up to my third overall ranked player. Now, let me just make my pick right quick. People have been loving the wide receivers in uh, in underdog, and I actually love this because now I get to double down on running backs. You know, we we went a little a little spicy with, with Barkley, and we are going to double down, or not double down, but we're going to actually center our team out a little bit with safety, right? Nick Chubb's a high floor guy, 1,200, uh, 1200 yards, 12 touchdowns, played in 12 games last year. You do the math, very simple, even for the people that don't even know how to do the math, just take a zero out of everything. He's just he's averaging a touchdown in 100 yards every single game. I honestly think, think that's what we can expect uh, in this year. They have, by pretty much every single website, by every single resource, by every single metric, Nick Chubb is going to be running behind the top-ranked offensive line this year. Cleveland has done a phenomenal job of turning that offense around. I think they are a, a low-key contender for... Um, low-key contender to just 
really, really, really surprised this year on both offense and an improved defense as well. So looking at the board here, let me, uh, I got like OCD sometimes. I need to get this out of the way. Okay, looking at the board here. Did I just exit out? No, I didn't. Alvin Kamara, I moved up to three. The reason being, I just see zero. You know, at first, Michael Thomas went down. And then we have Adam Troutman going down. Traquan Smith is not doing anything. It seems like it's literally just going to be Marquez Callaway and Alvin Kamara. And, you know, I don't typically put too much stock into preseason games like statistics and just like watching the eye test it's whatever for me I am always concerned about usage I'm looking at who's running with the first team but with Alvin Kamara man I I feel a lot more confident after James seeing James Winston sling it in the last preseason week so the fact that he, you know my one my big concern moving Alvin Kamara down was the fact that Taysom was probably going to be under center or so I thought for a while because they need to be a little bit more creative, but it looks like James Winston is going to win the job. Makes me a lot more comfortable with Alvin Kamara because there's no other there's no there's no other targets to go to in this offense besides Kamara and Callaway. So he's moved up to number three. We still have a little bit of a concern with Dak's shoulder. So Zeke at five behind Derrick Henry for me. Then you see the wide receivers rip off. I'm you know I'm fine with those picks. I just personally like to take running backs early. Aaron Jones. I do think Aaron Jones has a wide range of outcomes to be honest. I think there's a, a chance that we look back and we're like, yo, like A.J. Dillon's pretty fat. We should have seen that he was going to eat this year, you know? And he could get goal line work. He could get a lot of early down work. Um, we could look back and just say, like, Aaron Jones was great. Maybe he finishes as, like, the RB11 or some shit, you know, scores nine touchdowns. That's not really what you want as a top 10 pick. Uh, I have him ranked up there. I'm just saying. I'm just saying that is within his range of outcomes. Saquon, obviously extremely risky. If you're in the top five, fade Saquon. Travis Kelsey, not looking to take a tight end. What other what other news do we have coming out the, the stratosphere lately? Oh, James Robinson at pick 31. We'll get into Sony Michelle. We'll get into Darrell Henderson. We'll get into James Robinson in a sec. I did make a full James Robinson video a few days bike, which you guys can check out if you'd like to. Drop my thoughts on that. I think end of third round is probably right about where you want to be grabbing James Robinson. We don't have any wide receivers yet. Man, they're going earlier and earlier. I might just triple down on on running backs. Like, I'm not really about to take Lockett at the 310. That's just, like, disrespectful to everything I stand for. My family would disown me. I'd have to call my mother right now and tell her I disrespected the family name if I did some shit like that. So what we're going to do is we're just going to hit – we're going to hit the running backs hard because the starting roster for underdog is one quarterback, two running backs, three wide receivers, which is why wide receivers start to get moved up in the rankings a little bit, but it's half PPR. So they don't score that much. Three wide receivers, one tight end. You do get a flex spot, which is why I like to have at least three to four really, really good running backs because you're going to start two of them every week, and then you need a third for a flex spot. And don't get confused. You guys are going to see a lot of people. Here's the other thing. You guys are going to see a lot of people. If you're if you're drafting on underdog, it's for two reasons, right? This is a really, really good place for you to prep for your actual draft. Like if, I, A lot of you guys probably have drafts this week. A lot of you guys have drafts over Labor Day weekend, Saturday, Sunday, Monday night. This will get you perfectly in tune with where players are actually getting drafted because again all the drafts are at least three dollars to join and again if you get top three you're going to get money you're going to win from this um so everyone's taking it extremely seriously obviously so you're getting really really sharp adp so you can do one of two things like some people play on the site i play to practice and see the trends and see the players movements and everything like that some people play legitimately to like win money and that's not i i, I don't really care about winning money on this site I win a whole lot of motherfucking money, but I don't care about it, you know? All right, we're at 4-3. No tight ends left that I want right now. See, I'll take Lockett at the 4-3. I'm also fine with Julio Jones. Um, let's see. Yeah, it's kind of a toss-up. Who do you guys like more, Tyler Lockett or Julio? I'm going to go with Julio. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with Julio just because I don't really have a lot of exposure to him on this site so far. Um and the A.J. Brown knee thing is tripping me out a little bit. I'm not, like, too, too nervous about him, I guess. But I'm, I'm a little bit nervous about A.J. Brown just getting – he's got, like, seven knee surgeries. He's like, he's like my fucking grandpa. My grandpa had his hips replaced, his knees replaced. He ain't putting up fucking 1,600 receiving yards or no, no shit like that. But, you know, grandpa does, does what he can. He's a cool dude. Um, what the fuck was I talking about? Yeah, and the other thing is to win money. So a, a lot of you guys probably follow a lot of people – on Twitter that post their underdog teams, right? And 
Underdog has partnered up with like everybody in the fantasy space. So you're going to see a lot of teams fucking scattered everywhere, and you're going to see a lot of these builds with four running backs. The reason that's being done, those teams are almost always in tournament plays. And what I mean by tournament is where they have 100,000 entries and like the top place gets a million dollar prize, right? Like big tournaments. The, the draft run right now, you could join regular 12 team leagues and you're just competing against the other 11 people. When you see the tournament builds, people try to try to build because you have to separate yourself from a million people. You try to build an extremely unique lineup. The person who won it last year had four running backs. Therefore, we only have a one year sample size of someone winning the best ball tournament. So everyone's like, oh, this is the right lineup for it. That is a tournament you're building extremely unique rosters. Just because you see those screenshots being posted on Twitter of tournament lineups does not mean that's how you should construct your roster on underdog, okay? It is okay to draft more than four running backs. It is okay to draft six running backs if you want to. You can go two quarterbacks, two tight ends, six running backs. Not good at math. Where does that leave us? And eight wide receivers still and still have a fine team, okay? So don't. I would not go above six running backs. I would, I would get at least eight wide receivers on your roster. Uh, but that's the typical construction I would have, somewhere between five and six running backs on this because you draft a large team. For, the, for those of you guys that are new to best ball, um, that's how this works. You draft a large team, and it starts the best players at each position each week. 18 mans, 18 rounds is... And, uh, again, quarterback, two running backs, three wide receivers, one tight end. All right, let's see what's going on on the board here on the busy. So I took Dobbins at the end of the third. I still love Dobbins. I think I think people are thinking too hard about this again. I do. I mean, he's obviously going to split time with Gus, but he is, he is just he is just a ridiculously efficient running back. I think at the end of the year, he's going to look we're going to look back and Dobbins is going to have double digit touchdowns over a thousand rushing yards, all that. James Robinson goes off the board three picks earlier. So James Robinson obviously takes over as a leader in the backfield there. This this offense just looks like an absolute shit show. I think Carlos Hyde takes a lot of work that James Robinson got last year. Not a lot, but like 20 to 25% of the carries. It could happen in the red zone. It could happen inside the 10-yard line. That could end up being a problem for James Robinson if he's not getting the goal line carries. Uh, there's also, I think LaVisca Chanel, I need to start moving him up my board because... Uh, obviously with Travis Etienne out for the year. We have Marvin Jones now banged up. We have, um, we're about to be up in two picks. Nope, nope, nope. What, what are we doing here, Sam? Okay. Okay, we are up. And y'all know I absolutely just smash Kyler Murray every single time I can in the fifth round. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Listen, this is also where I would probably start looking at the tier of tight ends. Like Kyle Pitts has started to fall down a little bit. I think we haven't heard a lot of buzz from him, but he had started going in the fourth round at like the 4-4. You know, his ADP is 47. Um, Now you're getting him down to pick 5-10, which is, I can't do fucking math right now, but we're going to take Kyler here because I love Kyler. It's a stat that I dropped for you guys many times. Uh, before he injured his shoulder in week 11 last year, his week 1-10 to 10 pace, fantasy points, he was on pace to be the single highest fantasy point scorer ever. Not Lamar Jackson, not Patrick Mahomes. Kyler Murray was on pace to be the top fantasy point scorer of all time. What I probably should have done was stack Lamar Jackson and Mark Andrews here if I could have. I could have went with Lamar at 5'10". Might have been able to grab Andrews at the 6'3". He was not a guy I really wanted. I was not in on Mark Andrews. However, with the injuries to the entire Baltimore team, the pick is looking a little bit more appealing. A little, little bit more appealing. Uh, I could have waited on quarterback, but I just really feel like Kyler has like league winning. Like I feel like when we look back on the year and we look at championship rosters, you know that year that Lamar Jackson went nuts, his MVP season, it was like anyone who won that league, won their league, like had Lamar Jackson on their team. I feel like we might be in store for that with Kyler. All right, so we won't stack it, uh, but I will. I will. I will take Mark Andrews here because I've I've taken TJ Hawkinson basically every single time that I've had the chance around this zone. So I have almost no Mark Andrews exposure. So I always say if you guys are doing a lot of drafts, if you're doing a lot of drafts, right? You got like four drafts over the next two weekends or some shit. Always diversify the revenue. Always diversify. Because listen, we're all going to be wrong about a lot of shit and we're going to be right about a lot of shit. Okay. 
it's like it, we're really predicting the weather out here when it comes to fantasy a- a- uh, analysis. So that being said, like you're going to be wrong about a lot of guys. So, you know, if you're at the three, six or some shit in one draft, you want to take Terry McLaurin and the next draft, maybe you want to take CD lamb. Okay. Because you, you don't want to put all your stock in one or two players and draft them every single time. You know, you, you just don't want to do that. I'm telling you, it's, it's a surefire way to fuck your whole season up if you're in multiple leagues. So I always diversify the revenue. That's why if I take CJ Hawkinson everywhere, you know what, this time, uh, this time around, we'll take Mark Andrews. And again, I like Mark Andrews a little more because Hollywood Brown, Rashad Bateman, both hurt. I think Sammy Watkins even fucking hurt at this point. So, um, yeah, back to uh, James Robinson. Yeah, I, I like James Robinson as, as uh, a, a mid-range RB2. I don't think he's going to return RB1 numbers for you. I don't think he's going to get RB1 usage. He'll get RB1 maybe usage in volume, but he's not going to be as good as he was last year. So, third round seems good. Uh, that's a great start for the person who was in the seventh spot. You went with a wide receiver, and now James Robinson moves into the slot where you can actually feel comfortable with your RB2 in, this, in the third round. So you have Stephon Diggs, you have Gibson, James Robinson, Ayuk. That's a that's a really, really strong start. He stacked uh, Josh Allen with Stephon Diggs, and he took TJ Hawkinson in, in the sixth round. So all around sexy-ass draft by Jay Pass. Jay Pass 88. You get a pass from me, my dog. Um, Has... Darrell Henderson, okay, so that, okay, I wanted to see where these guys are starting to go off the board now. So Darrell Henderson went off the board, pick 47 at the end of the fourth round. I think that's that's correct. I think uh, Darrell Henderson is still very much the guy. But them adding Sony Michelle, this is my first time, I believe, going on record talking about the situation. I am not necessarily concerned about Michelle from a talent standpoint. I don't think there's any way that, like, Michelle becomes the guy there. But this is a very, like, what's the difference? Here, here's what you have to ask yourself. What's the difference between Sonia Michelle and Malcolm Brown last year? Okay. What is the difference? There isn't a difference. They're the same shitty player, right? They're the same shitty player that Sean McVay was very, very okay forcing into a timeshare with Darrell Henderson. That's where it becomes dicey. Um, Maybe it doesn't happen right away. You know, you join a guy gets added to the team two weeks before the season starts. He wasn't good on his last team. Maybe it takes him like a month to really start getting a role. I do think Sony Michelle, obviously, you know, if it was much better for Darrell Henderson had they not been adding Sony Michelle, but they added him. And now I could see him playing a similar role to Malcolm Brown last year, um, probably without the pass catching duties. Because Malcolm Brown, the problem with Malcolm Brown was like, he's not good, but he led the team last year in red zone carries, in targets, in receptions, in goal line carries. And it's like, there's no fucking sane reason for that to have been the case, you know? And with Sony Michelle, you know, they're concerned. Uh, Adam Schefter came out and said, Sony Michelle has like a decent chance to be the lead back in this backfield. And when Adam Schefter says something like that, I mean, it comes from good merit. Like, you know, he knows what the fuck he doing. So when Schefter says something like that, I start to listen. Okay. And I'm not just going to assume that he's not going to play a role because I don't think Sony Michelle is good. Like my personal take on it don't fucking matter when a guy like Adam Schefter comes out and tells us what's what. Wow, we're in the seventh round and there's just no value left on the board. I like Debo, man. I, I'm surprised Debo fell all the way down here to the seventh cent. Give me that all day. Fuck yeah. His, his ADP is 65, pick 82. Why'd I get him so? Did, did something happen to him? Did he catch the hurt today? I can't even do it. Fuck this. Fuck you. Fuck you. All right. Uh, while you're here, y'all, while we're hanging, make sure you uh, scroll down a little bit. Hit the thumbs up button, please, if you're enjoying Actually, you know what I think I'm going to do next week? If I'm alive after draft weekend, I think I'm going to do uh, a live stream draft on Underdog every single day of the week to help make sure everybody's fully, fully, fully prepped for the drafts coming up next weekend. So I think five straight nights of mocks. Monday through Friday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I'm about to give up. I'm about to give up my entire nightlife. The last week of summer. I'm not I'm not about to get fucking wasted. I'm not about to get fucking late. I'm not about to do anything because I'm going to I'm going to hook y'all up. We're going to do like Q&A. It's going to be five straight nights. Maybe I'll do guests too. Do you guys want me to do guests? I don't really do I don't bring people on for Hold on, let me make my pick real quick and then I can keep fucking complaining about my life. Uh I really want to take Tannehill later to stack him with Julio, or I could do do Trey Lance later too and just grab a third uh, guy. We have a tight end. I do like Tanyan again. I, I might I might double dip on tight ends if nah, Tanyan's not going to be there. Kenny G is a problem. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh fuck me. Jump. Ah. 
okay. All right. Uh, Kenny Gino at the A3. So the reason he's falling down to the A3, some of you guys might be like, that's a steal. That's value. He is still not practicing from the hamstring injury. That is a concern. He's not even like limited. He's not getting in practice reps. Like we are deep into the month of August. It is August 27th on our Lord's year. And Kenny Galladay still has a hamstring made of string cheese. That's an issue. That's a fucking issue. That's a big issue. Uh, and that's an issue for this entire New York Giants offense, which is why I would never suggest what I just did here, which was stacking two players from a terrible offense. Get the question a lot. Can you stack two players from the same offense? My answer is yes. If, with a caveat, if the offense is a very, very good one, okay? If the offense is a very good offense, I give you the go-ahead. If you're not sure, I would steer towards pessimism. I would steer towards being risk-averse and probably side with not doing it. Because if the offense tanks, you're fucked. And if the offense is just bad overall, then the chance of two guys hitting on the offense is extremely small. So with the New York Giants, like we know they're not going to be a good offense, right? So double up. Like don't don't do this in season long. Don't take Saquon and Kenny Galladay. Take one of the two if you want to. But don't take two of them, please. Uh, but yeah, he's not practicing yet, and that's a big concern because they are two weeks away from – playing a real regular season NFL game, which I won't be able to go to while Snacks and Animal go to and have a great time at tailgate because some psychotic woman that I went to high school with decided to have her wedding on September 12th on a Sunday on the first fucking Sunday of NFL football. <sighs> There's a lot of pent up anger in me right now that I'm not going to let come out on camera, but, uh, just how fucking absurd is that? It's ridiculous. It's fucking unbelievable. Okay. Um, bike to the draft board. And uh, oh, yeah. So I'm going to do streams every single night next week, Monday to Friday. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel and hit the notification bell so it'll let you know when I go live. I know Pete Overzet is doing live streams every night at like 845. So I'm probably going to try to do them a little earlier uh, or after. Yeah, definitely not after. I'll probably do them at like 7 from 7 to 8 p.m. Eastern time maybe 7.30 to 8.30 p.m. Eastern time so I could send you guys right over to his stream afterwards. That would be a good double up. That'd be cool. Um, so let me know what you guys want to see during that stream. Do you want me to just do live stream like Q&A with you guys? Do you want me to draft with you guys, like let the big dogs in the draft? Do you want me to do guests? Like I can pull some big names. Like let me know what guests you want me to pull on. Like I, I could probably pull Andy from the footballers. I could probably pull up like Ray GQ. I could bring Mike on from inside the brand. Um, I could do them with like animal snacks if you want to. Let me know who you guys want to see if you want to see guests at all. Because y'all know I could rip on here for an hour straight. No one wants to listen to that. I don't want to do it. But I fucking will. I fucking will. All right. So just let me know what you want, and I'll let you know that I don't want Jamar Chase in the fifth round. So the, the, the practice reports with the whole Jamar Chase thing is just so fucking stupid. Do not do not have things ebbing and flowing with uh, with the the practice reports of whether or not he's dropping passes at practice. That is the dumbest fucking thing I've ever, like. People in fantasy Twitter just doing the most all the time, just all the time. Okay, Jamar Chase is going to be fine, but he was never a good pick in the fourth round. He was never a good pick in the fourth round. He was never a good pick before T. Higgins. And uh, and now he's starting to go where he probably should be. Look at Antonio Brown up to 57. I'm so fucking proud of you guys. So fucking proud of you guys. We got Antonio Brown to 57. That's not going to happen in real life. The, the, un, honestly, the underdog ADP might be too sharp. It might just be too sharp. Uh-oh. We're bike on the clock. We love Antonio Brown this year. We love Antonio Brown because he's so much cheaper than the other Tampa Bay wide receivers. And Tom Brady's going to go off. He's going off, Ken. All right, so we have three running backs. We have three wide receivers. We have a, a quarterback and a tight end. Let's see what we're chilling with. The oh, Tanya's still on the board. Are you shitting me? For those of y'all that are new, for those of y'all that uh, draw ready reviews from tight end coach, Tanya's going to go the fuck off. Tanya Tanyan will be my my savior for all of the sins that I have delivered in my life. Anything bad I've ever told you guys that I've done, any bad player analysis I've ever given y'all, is being redeemed by Robert Tunyon at the 9-10. If you don't get a tight end early, Robert Tunyon will save your season. I promise. 
fuck a touchdown regression because he's going to he's finally going into the year as the tight end one. Like we didn't know who the actual starting it was like the Jace fucking Sternberger hype trains fucking going on last year. Jace Sternberger, Jace fucking Sternberger better suited flipping burgers, all right? Put it that way. Wide receivers, let's go. Curtis Samuel's a fade for me at this point. Hollywood definite fade. Rondell Moore, up. fuck that. Rondell Moore's over under for receiving yards is like 500 this year, guys. I get that he's an exciting player. Oh, this is where we smashed J- Jacoby Myers, and uh, this this is where you. I this is this is a point I cannot get across to you guys like enough. Um, actually, this is something I tweeted out. Damn, Marquez Callaway is gonna go too early. Fuck. Let me put him in my queue. I'm not gonna get him though. Where are you? Did he already go? Oh yeah, he did. E Town Ballers. There go there go that man. There go that man. Where did he go? Up at the nine three. Okay. Marcus Callaway going up the nine three. Jacoby. I think Jacoby and Marcus Callaway are like two must draft players. If you're in your friends and family leagues and it's not people that are like super in tune with fantasy, these two guys, Jacoby Myers and Marcus Callaway, are gonna be like the key to your wide receiver. It's it's gonna be the key to you being able to go running back, tight end, and quarterback early, because those guys are gonna perform as wide receiver twos for you. And no one in your league is actually going to know who those guys are. So you're going to be able to get them in the 13th, 15th round. Um, but make sure they are on your squad. This was something I tweeted out the other day. I'm not going to pull up the fucking tweet. But you can, you you all can follow me on Twitter at Nick Urkelano. Let me throw my social handles on there for you. Let me just throw it fat and thick right in the middle. Um, after Marquez Callaway caught his second or his first touchdown pass, I tweeted like Marquez Callaway, uh, his ADP is going to rise up so high that you should still be drafting him, okay? He's one of those players that he's he's just straight up a good pick. It's not about value anymore. You're getting the number one. You're getting the number one in like the ninth or tenth round. He's going to be the clear alpha in that offense, in that passing offense, where Troutman is hurt, where Michael Thomas is hurt, and uh, Jameis Winston is looking like at least okay. And Marcus Callaway is just getting every target. So Callaway needs to be, you know, ninth round I think is a fucking great pick still. I would go as far as the eighth round, you know, I don't think any any of you guys are going to need to draft him that high, but I would. I would I would fucking do it for y'all. So I'm sad that I missed out on him, but I'm happy I got Jacoby. Jacoby. Let's go back to the draft board. Let's go back to the draft board. Let's go back to the draft board. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I realize I do. I do that all the time. I say, yeah. Like, I do that in real life often, and I realize that it comes from, it stems from, subconsciously um man i missed out on all my quarterbacks that i needed huh oh no ryan Tannehill didn't get picked yet i could still get him i could still get him who took aj brown all right e-town ballers got aj brown and he already picked in this round so i could still stack up ryan Tannehill. let's go um the me saying yeah stems from spongebob when they're delivering the pizza and he's like, the crusty crayer, you know, and now I just find myself, it's like, it's like, uh, if you're editing a video and you just clip a little part of it, I just take the, yeah, I know it's a good story, Nick. Thanks guys. Fuck you. Whatever. Oh, you fucking motherfucker. J pass. He did it again. He did it again. This kid doesn't miss this motherfucker. Don't miss. 7-7 seven, seven, Sutton, I don't like that pick. Good, good. You fucking missed on that pick, you cunt. Jarvis Landry, good pick. Elijah Moore, eh. Corey Davis, probably better pick. Damn, see, I got to start paying attention. Corey Davis is a fantastic pick right now. Um, Please don't get sniped by me. I don't think he got picked yet, did he? 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 Oh, what am I doing here? Let's go. Like, why are we taking Nelson Aguilar, AJ Green at the 11 3? I think he was just trying to piss me off. He thinks I was he thinks I wanted the AJ Green stack. What a fucking psychopath. Did Corey Davis already get picked? What are you going the fucking fifth round? Dog, who are who is drafting in this fucking draft? Is this fucking Evan Silva? Oh my god. I'm gonna fucking time out because I got played. I played myself. James fucking Connor. Are you shitting me? Are you shitting me? James Connor? Whatever. Whatever. Something about diversifying exposure. 
All right. Well, this is ridiculous. Where the fuck did Corey Davis go off the board? He wasn't even on the board. All right. I got to bring the bookmarks down because I can't. It's not moving tabs and shit. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This performance has been fucking out of control. Ah, okay. Corey Davis went in the seventh at the seven five. So like, how are you going to make a sharp pick like Corey Davis seven five, and then a terrible pick like Darnell Mooney at the eight eight? Whatever. Fuck you guys. All right. So Corey Davis is another guy you guys should be targeting. I know Elijah Moore has gotten a lot of the hype, and I wanted to draft Brian Edwards and Terrace Marshall, but the stupid fucking clock. I got to start using the queue. I'm sorry. If you guys are in these drafts, make sure you use the queue because they the 30 seconds per pick. All right. The fast drafts are phenomenal. There's no more slow drafts, by the way. If you guys have been drafting on the platform, uh, no more slow drafts because obviously they would end up hitting the regular season start. So. Okay, so fuck. See, I took Kenny Galladay. I should, if I didn't time out, I wouldn't have taken to Kenny Galladay, and then Sterling Shepard would have been a phenomenal pick here. But lo and behold, he's not. This is actually this is probably where you want to start taking like a Sony Michelle. There's a really really decent chance Sony Michelle again has that Malcolm Brown role from last year, and they don't have Cam Akers, so it's like it's a more steady role for him. So I like Sony Michelle down here. Uh, you know, as a late round flyer, he could end up being the lead ball carrier and he could get goal line carries, which is the big thing. Like they're worried about Darrell Henderson's durability. Okay. So they're not going to put him in situations where he's just taking fucking headshots after headshots after headshots. Same fucking call of duty. So they're going to put Sony Michelle in there. That's not what I wanted to do. What are we doing here, guys? What are we doing here, fellas? All right. Let's look back at the board. Any other, like, news? Oh, so, yeah, so Corey Davis and Zach Wilson have just been absolutely linked up. They are, they are like a chain. They are an arrested fucking felon to a handcuff. They they have been in sync, man. We ain't talking JT, but 50% target share. This dude has a 50% target share in preseason games with Zach Wilson. They sign him to make $40 million. And he's playing like he's making $40 million. So Corey Davis is looking good, bro. And I know Elijah Moore has been out. But listen, when when, you, when you're when you given the chance to take over as the alpha, you do it. And, he, and he's been doing it. So Corey Davis, later round pick, it's good. It's good stuff. And again, all the picks here are like extremely. These are all people that have been following fantasy football and are very in tune with it. So it'll give you a good idea if you are in a sharper league, big money. League, this is where the players are going to go. Again, use promo code BDGE when you sign up on Underdog. The link to sign up on Underdog will be right. It'll be the first thing in the show notes, first thing in the description. It'll take you. You just click it. It'll take you straight to the App Store. Whatever fucking weird phone you're using, it'll take you there. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. If you're using Cricket Mobile, we in there. We in that bitch. We're cricketing all night. Um, use promo code BDGE when you deposit $10. You deposit $10, you're going to be able to draft like 10 of these drafts, okay? Use BDGE. They're going to give you $25 free dollars on top of this. The $25 can get you a ticket into the Best Ball Mania, which is the million-dollar prize pool. So you get flexible, like Simone Biles in this motherfucker. Yeah. Who do we got here? Did we take our second quarterback yet? This guy's out here fucking... This guy's out here sniping me, taking Corey Davis, and he doesn't even have a quarterback yet. Probably a smart move. Took Kirk Cousins. Not a bad pick. Not a bad guy. Jalen Rager. Yeah, I'm very much out on Rager. Uh, guys, do not draft Jalen Rager. He has basically fallen behind in the wide receiver. One, Devonta Smith is the, is the alpha. Two, Quez Watkins, I'm pretty sure, is going to be the second most targeted guy there. I follow a lot of beat reporters on Twitter. Um, if you're not following me on Twitter, like if, if you're new to Twitter as well, like if you don't even have a Twitter, that's one of the things I would probably really, really suggest you get on. Um, this is my at right here, at Nick Colano. And if you just follow most of the guys I'm following, this is all basically fa- fantasy Twitter. These are like beat reporters and good people that are on fantasy. So you can get, oh boy, oh boy, we're on a clock. I'm about to do the dumbest shit ever. I actually still think Marquez Valdez-Scantling is like the GOAT pick down here. I love Marquez Valdez-Scantling down here. Uh, every report has just been fucking raving about him. I don't know why. Like, I don't really believe it, but he's still a great best ball pick. He's a great best ball pick. Um, Because he's going to have his big games. Like, even if he has another shitty season like he just has every year, he's still going to have his big games where he's going to get into your lineup a few times. When he catches that 80-yard pass. It's going to be beautiful. 
Beautiful. Yeah, so follow me on Twitter, and you can get your news from there. So I follow a lot of beat reporters, as I was saying. Uh, MVS, they're, they've been raving about him. Um, I was talking about someone else, I feel. Oh, Jalen Rager. Yeah, I, I follow a lot of Philly beat reporters, too, because I'm trying to be zoned in on that team because they have a lot of moving pieces there that are kind of tough to decipher this year for fantasy between Jalen Hurts, Miles Sanders, Rager, Devonta Smith, the tight ends. You know, there's a lot of shit going on there. So I would fade Jalen Rager in the 12th, 13th, take Quez Watkins in the 16th or 17th. He's just a big play every time he touches the ball. I really want to take Shepard here. I really want to take Shepard. If Kenny G misses time, Shepard's going to get a so so many targets. Uh, I actually love Geo too, and I'm going to take Geo. Fuck, I might. I hate taking six running backs. I like five. Feels like the sweet spot. But because we we're not going to have to take three tight ends, we're not going to have to take more than two quarterbacks because we have Kyler as a sexy pick. We will take a six running back. Uh, Gio's going to find his way into lineups often this year. I'm, I'm, uh, I like the Jets running backs too. I like to diversify on Tevin Coleman, Ty Johnson. I can't believe Michael Carter's still getting picked. Like wherever he got picked was way too fucking early. Still, let's see. Holy shit! Until Michael Carter is a double digit pick, he's a terrible pick. We'll put it that way. Fuck, stop doing that. I keep hitting like the Mac. I have the Mac pad where I just do that and it just swipes to the back page. Never mind. Why don't we just look at the board? Why do I make this so difficult? Like, I don't get it. What's wrong with me? Michael Carter, ninth round. Okay, pick 107. Yeah, for those of you all that are like new to fantasy right now and just kind of joining and getting your, getting your, uh, your affairs in order, getting your... Uh, you're prepping right now for the first time. Michael Carter, you might have like heard the name and think it's exciting. He was a fourth round pick, and he is he is just not getting any play with the ones. And again, I follow a lot of beat reporters at a Jets camp, and uh, their surprise running back out of camp is not Michael Carter, it's Ty Johnson. And I'm not surprised about that because Ty Johnson. Let's take a look at Ty Johnson. Let's take a look at Mr. Ty Ty. Ty Johnstein, one phenomenal hair. I wonder what he uses. He probably uses Deva Curls, Diva Curls, whatever that shampoo is. 5'11", 210, real size, 4'4", 5 speed, 91st percentile, 86th percentile speed score. Like, this dude low-key can ball. He can ball, sir. Uh, so don't be surprised if Ty Johnson ends up playing a much bigger part of that backfield than than we know. And this is not me saying I want to jump up and draft him. This is just me saying that this is for sure going to be a committee in New York. And give me the guy, The give me, first of all, give me the fucking starters. Both Tevin Coleman and Ty Johnson have started over Michael Carter in all of their preseason games. So give me the starters, first of all, and, and give me the cheaper ones. I don't, like, the fact that Michael Carter is going six rounds earlier makes absolutely no fucking sense still. Like, I get that there was hype five months ago, but, they, they, like, you need to be able to to move around the stupid fucking nonsense that that spirals around your brain. Your brain's not big. My brain is big. So listen to me and listen to what I tell you. So I've been doing this for a long time. I've been looking at fantasy bullshit for six straight months, which is also why you should cop our draft guide. Listen, if you want nothing else, if you don't want to do any more prep, go to bdge.store right now. bdge.store. I'll bring it up for y'all right now. Here's what we're going to do. bdge.store. And this is our draft guide. It's beautiful. It's organized for you uh, in minimal fashion, so it's not confusing. And literally, you just cop it, and you have nothing else to worry about. It's all perfectly um, organized for you. If you've done no research, we've got the all fade list. We have got the um, we've got the must draft list. We've got our rankings on there. So you literally just draft off that. If you don't want to do a single more second of prep, if you don't want to watch me or listen to me ever again. That's what you have to do to do that. BDGE.store has got everything you fucking need. Buy the draft guide. Be a good person. It's for the fucking kids, Vince. What else do we got? Okay, let's see. Let's see. Yeah, so we're done with wide receiver. Or we're done with running backs. Uh, we are going to need to grab another quarterback eventually. I don't hate Carson Wentz. I think he's going to get on the field very early. I mean, at this point, we might as well take Daniel Jones because we have two New York Giants players. So I feel like the stack makes sense. I do kind of want Deami Brown here. Uh, Oprah has one quarterback, so there's a good chance he takes one. I don't think he's going to take Daniel Jones, though. I think 
Deami Brown will be off the board if I don't take him here. I'm going to take Deami Brown because I like this kid. Good rookie. Good, 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 good rookie at a UNC. Good deep ball. Should match in with Ryan Fitzpatrick pretty well in Washington this year. Hopefully Daniel Jones drops back to me. I'm not going to yell. It's too late for me to yell if I don't get him. I know you guys want to see. You guys don't want to see me prosper. Like, I already know that for a fucking fact. You guys would love to see my downfall. So you you want Oprah to take Daniel Jones here more than anything. There's nothing. There's nothing that you would like more than to see that clock strike zero and see D period Jones pop up on the fucking board. That's right. Take take fucking one foot Troutman. You little, you little. I'm done. All right. Like this isn't necessary. Let's go, Deshaun Watson. That was your pick. You fucking moron. Deshaun Watson's not playing this year, guys. I'm sorry. It just ain't happening. It ain't happening. Where did Jameis go off the board? I didn't even realize he went off the board. Definitely got picked, huh? I would say Jameis is what, 13th round now, 14th round? I still think he's a terrible pick, to be honest with you. I know he looked good with Marquez Callaway in the one game, but objectively, guys, again, this is why you don't look at preseason stats because we don't know if we're playing against a second string defense. Like, you just don't want to do that. Where did Jameis go off the board? All right, 14th round, 14 5, one pick before Tua. Fine with that. We gooch with that. Ramondre Stevenson, uh, he's going to get a little bit of run. He's going to get a little bit of run. Uh, it's Damian Harris' backfield. I've been steering you guys correct in that backfield for too many months. Ramondre Stevenson was uh, my first running back rankings, rookie running back rankings, when I start breaking down my rookies. Our Dynasty guide is up on the on the site as well, too. If you play in Dynasty Leagues, you want to know a little bit more about the rookies and whatnot. <coughs> oh, fuck. <coughs> <coughs> Shit flying in my mouth. Uh, Ramondre Stevenson was my RB4, my first lap around the running backs for this class. He was my RB4. Eventually, Trey Sermon hopped him. Uh, but I've been high on Ramondre Stevenson, but I've been higher on Damian Harris. I own Damian Harris everywhere. Um, so he's a fucking great pick. He's still going in like the sixth, seventh round, which I think is ridiculous. I still think he should be a sixth, uh, fifth round pick probably. But he's never gonna. you're never going to have to take him in the fifth round, which is the beautiful, beautiful part of this. I'm not ready for this draft weekend. Holy shit. It's tomorrow. I'm filming this at 10 o'clock. What does my life come to? You guys want to see the board? I saw. Where did my phone go? Let's see. Carlos Hyde. Honestly, Carlos Hyde in the 16th round is not a terrible pick either. He's going to get an annoying amount of work in this offense. I know it. I know it. Who are some of my favorite picks from rounds 14 to 16 so far that we've seen? You guys know I said I like the Sterling Shepard pick a lot. Him and Danny Jones just have a built-in chemistry already. And with Kenny Galladay banged up, I mean, he's probably going to lead the team in targets if there's an absence. Uh, Terrell Williams, I believe, hurt himself again. So don't be drafting Tyrell Williams right now. KJ Hamler is kind of interesting, but probably not with Teddy Bridgewater under center. Teddy Bridgewater won the starting uh, quarterback job in Denver, so Hamler probably probably going to steer clear there. Troutman is hurt. Rashad Penny's going to be hurt. Chuba Hubbard is a handcuff and a backup. David Johnson. I still think David Johnson's going to catch some passes. I don't think he's terrible down in the 15th round. Like Josh Palmer, he's kind of like a, an arbitrage Deami Brown. And by arbitrage, I mean literally fucking four picks later. Sick. Uh, Zach Ertz, Carlos Hyde. Eh, 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 oh, Tevin Coleman, we like that. I was kind of hoping I can get Christian Kirk there to stack him with uh, Kyler, but it is what it be. Every pick down here kind of stinks, to be honest. We are approaching our final two picks. So we have two quarterbacks. Uh, we're good there. We have two strong tight ends. And I will go bike to bike wide receivers here and finish off the squadron that way. 
you know what? I talked about Quez. Might as well uh, run him up working with the starters. Yep. You know why? Because he's a fucking starter. That's why. Usually starters work with the starters. Is there anyone else down here I like? Eh, not really. Wide receivers down here are fucking ugly. They ugly. I don't hate Dwayne Eskridge, I guess. Nico Collins, like, semi could be the one on the outside there. Not really. That was that was a fun little storyline for, like, half a second, though. I kind of don't hate Keelan Cole. It's kind of fucking weird. I just have a gut feeling that Keelan Cole is going to be, like, a starter there in New York and piss everybody off. Or do we just triple trip? Oh, this is like the worst stack in the history. I might be the only person in the his in like underdog of twenty twenty one of the of the two hundred thousand drafts that have been done that has a giant stack like this. But we're gonna do it. Oh, we're gonna. Do, oh, you think we're not gonna do it? Oh, oh, you think we're not taking Darius Slayton here? Oh, oh, you think we're not taking Darius Slayton here? This fucking idiot took Kadarius Tony. I would have taken Kadarius Tony if he took Slayton. Wait, you think we're not going to do it? All right, I got a proposition. If I do it, if I draft Darius Slayton here, you guys got to sign up on Underdog with my promo code. Deal? All right, sick. Can't believe you agreed to that. Deal. Fucking run it. Go download Underdog right now. That will end the video. This is my final squadron. Kyler Murray, Daniel Jones. Saquon, Nick Chubb, J.K. Dobbins, James Conner, Sony Michelle, Gio Bernard. My team would be a lot better if I didn't take James Conner there, and instead we had five running backs, and in that spot we would have had another solid wide receiver at pick 130. But as it always is, would it be? Two tight ends there. We have uh, Julio, Debo, Kenny G, Jacoby Myers, MVS, Deami Brown, Quez Watkins, Darius Slayton. Tight ends, Mark Andrews, Robert Tunyon quick look at the final board uh and again make sure you go sign up on underdog link right down below use the promo code bdge when you deposit 10 bucks you're gonna get 25 free dollars on top of it and make sure you are subscribed to the channel because we will continue to put out videos like this every day helping you prep for your drafts as well as in season we're doing five nights of live streams five nights of underdog live stream drafts starting next monday next monday 7 p.m eastern time let me know how you guys want me to conduct those i will be the train conductor you will be the passengers and you guys get that would be a sick fucking that would be a cool ass idea get a plane get a pilot but the p actually never mind i'm not gonna go down that road right now um thank you guys for sticking around thank you guys for hanging out with me i gotta upload this make the thumbnail all that shit and then draft weekend starts uh we're gonna be doing a live draft on youtube over the weekend as well so again make sure you got the notification bell on make sure you subscribe make sure you hit the thumbs up make sure you go download on the dog app and i fucking love you and i'll see you when i sees you peace